Okay, so here we are, module 17, aggregate demand, and the things that shift aggregate demand. And Cody is saying hello. So, why is the aggregate demand curve downward sloping? There are three main reasons. Uh, first is the interest rate effect. Um, as prices go down, people don't need as much money, okay? And the interest rate becomes lower, and at a lower interest rate, more businesses want to invest. Uh, consumers are going to buy more things on interest, refrigerators, large purchases, and so output is going to increase. Uh, the second reason for the downward sloping demand curve, aggregate demand curve, is the wealth effect or the real balance effect. As the price level falls, uh, the cash that people have will buy more, and so people will spend more money, and that increases real output. And then finally, the net export effect. Lower price level means not only are goods produced in the U.S. relative to uh, you know, other goods in foreign countries, um, so people in the U.S. are going to buy more, and people from other countries are going to buy more, which will increase GDP. Um, these you should be aware of them. They're not you know the most important thing, but just like our regular demand curve, aggregate demand is also downward sloping. Prices go down, output is going to increase. Now let's look at fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is controlled by Congress and the president, right? And they have the power to do two things. They can authorize spending and they affect tax policy, okay? And so both of these fall under the uh, title of fiscal policy. And so uh, one of the biggest problems that the economy has to deal with is a recession, and so the government can intervene two ways, either directly or indirectly. If they were going to intervene directly, they would increase government spending. That's injecting money right into the economy, which would shift aggregate demand to the right, and that will bring us out of uh, the recession. And you'll see uh, in a minute what that looks like on our graph. The, all, the government can also intervene indirectly. Okay, they can decide that they're going to decrease taxes. As taxes are lowered, people will start to have more disposable income. And when people have more disposable income, they're going to increase their consumption spending. And this will shift aggregate demand to the right, bringing us out of the recession. Okay, and so both of these, either direct spending or indirectly uh, lowering taxes, is going to affect uh, aggregate demand. Um, both of these are referred to as expansionary fiscal policy. Increasing spending, lowering taxes is expansionary policy. And then if they do the opposite, decreasing spending or raising taxes, that is known as contractionary policy, which is used to fix periods of high inflation. And we'll talk about all of this a lot more in class. So, things that shift the aggregate demand curve. First, changes in expectations. If consumers are optimistic about the future, they're going to buy, right? They think times are going to be good. They're going to go out and they're going to buy a new car. They're going to put a pool in their house. They're going to, you know, go out and get that pair of shoes they wanted. And businesses are also going to increase their investment spending. If they think good times are coming and they're going to get more customers, they want to improve their business. Uh, changes in wealth. As the value of your assets go up, consumers will spend more, right? Because I know, wow, my house is worth a lot more. You feel good. One day you know you're going to sell your house for a lot of money. And so you're willing to maybe forego some savings in order to spend money now. Um, this is mostly for investment spending. But firms will invest in physical capital either when machines are breaking down or demand is increasing, right? If I own a pizza place and I have customers waiting out the door, that's time for me to buy a new pizza oven so I can, uh, you know, meet the demand of my customers. And so if there is slow demand or if firms have enough capital, investment spending will slow down. 
Monetary policy. We're going to go into much more detail about monetary policy in Unit 4, but some of the basics will be covered right here. Uh, monetary policy is controlled by the Federal Reserve. And basically, the Federal Reserve controls the size of the money supply in order to affect the interest rate. Okay, And this is another way to stabilize the economy. So we have fiscal policy, which is Congress and the President. And then we have monetary policy, which is the Federal Reserve. When the Fed increases the quantity of money, banks have more money. And what do banks want to do with their money? Well, they want to lend it out. That's how banks make money because they make interest, right? And you should know from supply and demand, when there's more of something, what happens to the price of it? Yes, it goes down. And the price of money is the interest rate. And so when the Fed increases the money, interest rates go down, and at lower interest rates, consumers are going to spend more on interest-bearing purchases, and businesses are willing to invest more. Right, so there we have it. Lower interest rates lead to higher investment and higher consumption spending. And this will shift the aggregate demand curve to the right. So increasing the money supply lowers the interest rate, increases investment, increases spending, and will shift aggregate demand to the right. Uh, more changes in aggregate demand. Let's look at the graph here. So proper labeling, as always, is extremely important. You have price level on the vertical axis and real GDP, real output on the horizontal axis. You have your downward sloping demand curve, and increases in aggregate demand will shift to the right, right? What this does is it increases output, as we'll see when we put it all together. And then, of course, shifts to the left will decrease aggregate demand. And again, we'll cover this much more, but the mechanics are the same uh, pretty much as the uh, regular demand curve that we talked about a few weeks ago. Again, please bring any questions to me tomorrow, and uh, we'll work on this in class.